evil lurk in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death and the Crown of Odal. On a morning of glittering ice and blue water, 1,200 years ago, the followers of Odout, the Avenger, were assembled on the shore before a long, proud warship to witness the funeral of their king. The body of the old Viking chieftain lay in state on deck as the spokesman raised the jewel crown of kingly power and placed it upon the head of Odout. <laughs> Then raised the ship's anchor and set the Viking monarch afloat upon the wide, uncharted seas. Perhaps Phoenician pirates sighted the Viking ship as it drifted across the Aegean, or a Byzantine galley boarded it in the open Atlantic. At all events, the crown of Odout turned up down the centuries on the markets of Paris and Amsterdam and Brussels, and men paid high price for it in blood and death. Until recently, on a threatening night, Mr. Fairchild and Mr. Roger of the investment house of Roger Fairchild appeared for an appointment at the remote country home of Mark Drumgold, Professor Emeritus, and internationally known expert on Viking history. The beautiful dark woman who accompanied them was Roger's foreign-born wife, Ilsa. It was good of you to see us, Professor. I am sorry I have postponed the meeting as I have, Mrs. Roger, gentlemen, but I need a retired life, and I find it difficult to cope with even the best of company. Yes, we quite understand, sir. But I think you'll find our business very intriguing. You see, Professor, our firm has come into possession of the crown of Odal. The crown of order. You have heard of it, of course. Why, why, yes, Mr. Roger. The crown of a 7th century Norse king, I believe. Exactly. It was actually my idea to come here, Professor. I persuaded my husband and Mr. Fairchild that if you would give us a documented statement of the authenticity of the thing, it would allow us to ask a higher price when the time came to sell. Of course. Uh, when may I see the crown? At once, sir. We have brought it along. It's here in this case. There. The crown of Odile. But how could you have been so foolish as to carry this priceless treasure around in the night without protection? Oh, we have protection, Professor Drumgold. Protection of secrecy. No one in the world has the slightest idea of the thing's whereabouts or its worth. And therefore, it will be perfectly safe to leave it with you for a few days, as long as you may need it. You will undertake the job of a cradle, Professor Von Gold? Indeed, Mrs. Roger, I am most intrigued. Oh, excellent. Come along now, gentlemen, and let the professor work. Hey, yes, good idea. Good, sir. I will phone tomorrow. Very good, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. a bar-relief that looks like early Etruscan influence. Aha! Uh -huh. A pronged 
gym setting suggests Byzantine workmanship. Huh? Who is that? Who is it, please? Mr. Fairchild? Or she? Ah, yes, that's it. Oh. Who are you, gentlemen? Us reporters, Pop. Our paper told us you got an interesting gadget here. Some kind of crown worth the very handsome piece of change. Who told you this? A paper pop, just like the man said. Now, how about giving us a look, huh? Why, uh, of course. Here it is. On the table. Get a load of that. It's a hook of fruitcake, huh? Broke up, be worth half a million claims. A very nice piece. And uh, very nice of the professor to show it to us. Don't mention it, gentlemen. And now I have something even more startling to show you. What? This. He's wise. What's with the gun, Professor? Who are you? My name's uh, Hoffner. Uh, mine's Max. We're reporters. You are thieves, gentlemen, not reporters. Thieves with the express intent of stealing this crown. And I will give you just one minute to tell me how you knew it was here. Uh, yeah, but, but... In one minute, I will avail myself of the privilege of self-defense and pull the trigger. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh... We got a phone call. A call for some guy who told us the crown would be here before midnight. Impossible. No one knew. Oh, this guy knew on the level. Said the crown used to belong to him. Named something like uh, Rudolph or uh, Old Lamp huh? or... Uh, Rudolph? Olaf? You... You don't mean... Odal? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm the button, Professor. Odal. You are either mad or a liar, Mr. Hoffman. No, I can... Nonsense! The informer you mention has been dead for 1,200 years. The story is fantastic, my man. Send where you are, please. I'm calling the police. How's that chance when he picks up that receiver we rush in? Operator? Operator? Hello, operator, I want... Ah, one down for us. Get that gun, Hoffman. Oh, give it here. Uh, Roscoe? Give it here. Max, wait. Shouldn't have done that, Max. Murder ain't my line. What do you want, chucklehead? This old geezer could identify you in a police lineup. Get that crown. Let's blow. All right, here's the hotel room. Now, keep the fingers under your coat until we're inside. Okay, Max. All I got to say is I wish you hadn't... Uh, are what? you the Monsieur Max and Hoffman? Hey, who the... What are you doing in here? The bellboy was kind enough to let me... Yeah, in. he's a very kindly punk. Now, what do you want? I'm sorry to intrude, but the crown of Odin, the rare 7th century relic, was stolen half an hour ago from the home of Professor Mark Drumgold. What? How do you know that? Well, you see, my name is Roger of Fairchild and Roger, and I own the crown in partnership with my wife and Mr. Fairchild. So, so. I received a somewhat mysterious phone call a few moments ago. The gentleman did not give his uh, name, uh, but... A, a deep voice? Yes. Strange voice. Weird. Far away. Hey, the same tomato that called us. What goes on Shut here? up. What did he say to you? Well, he said that you two might be able to help me locate my property. Could you? It means a good deal, uh, you know. I can imagine. <laughs> Sure, we might be able to do business if you want it back bad enough. Sure, sure sit down, Rose. <laughs> sure, we'll have a nice long talk. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. However, some friends of mine drove me over from my apartment. The Mr. Cranston and the Miss Lane, uh, they are waiting downstairs in their car. Perhaps I could invite them up. Don't invite they... nobody up. Now, uh, <laughs> what's it worth to you to get that crown back. Well, a great deal, a very great deal. Uh, not only the material loss, there's also the matter of principle. What do you mean by that? I mean that if I can catch the thieves, I shall prosecute to the extreme letter of the law. Oh, yeah? Oh, too bad you said that, Rose. Why? Because you're talking to him right now. What? Put up the gun, Max. Uh, gentlemen, please. Pack our stuff off, and then we'll get on with the fire escape and head for the beach hideaway. Max, Max, wait. This is number two. You heard me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Guess. How long have we been waiting here, Margot? Oh, not long, Lamont. Less than 20 minutes. Patience, you know, is a great virtue for a young man to learn. I'm not impatient. No? I'm getting worried, that's all. Why? Something may have happened. Like what, for instance? I, I like... beg your pardon. 
I'm the manager of this hotel. Were you with the gentleman who went up to suite 1109? Yes, we brought him over. We're his weekend guest. Why? We just found him on the floor of the bedroom. Shot to death. No. Like that, for instance. Come on, Margo. You try that number again, operator. It's Louis Roger's residence. I've been ringing for ten minutes, sir. But we know Mrs. Roger is there. This is an emergency. I'm sorry, sir. The number does not answer. Where in the world could she be? I don't know. She went up to bed just before Louis received that mysterious phone call, you remember? Yes, I don't see how she could sleep through all that ring. It's a strange night altogether. What are you doing, Lamont? Number, please. Uh, Hartfield 90990. I'm calling Fairchild, Roger's partner. He's the next best person to notify. You see any sign of it around? Of what? The thing that all the shooting's about. The crown of Odal. As far as I can make out, the room's empty. Hello. The Fairchild? Yes, Branson? I'm calling you from the Old Stone Hotel. Did Roger see Hoffman and Max? I'm afraid so. No luck? Hardly. They killed him. What? He's still on the floor at my feet. The medical examiner hasn't arrived yet, but it doesn't take an expert to tell he's dead. Well, then they're, they're thieves and killers. Yeah, it's all too obviously. It's horrible, Cranston. It's particularly for poor Roger. Well, I'm not sure he's the only victim. What does that mean? I've been trying to get Professor Drumgold on the wire for the last three quarters of an hour. No answer? None. Of course, he may have stepped out. No, not Drumgold. I know him. He never leaves his house after dark. Well, then all I can say is that Max and Hoffman... Yes, I know. Don't waste time putting it into words. Margo and I will hop over to his place right away. Preston. Yes? We'll have to do something about her first. Her? Who? Ilsa. Mrs. Roger. Where is she? Call me a little while before you rang up. Yes? She told me a strange story. It seems she woke up and saw an ancient white-haired man standing at the foot of her bed. Nightmare? No, I don't think so. The old gentleman gave us some very practical information. Oh, such as? An address on High Beach Road. Yes? Where he said she'd find the crown vote out. And? I tried to get her to wait. I promised to join her at once. You mean she went there alone? That was her plan. Well, couldn't you have prevented that? Well, I tried. I pleaded. But Ilsa's a headstrong woman. She's not afraid of anything that walks. What was the address? 16 High Beach Road. 16 High Beach. I was trying to contact you before I went after her. Uh, all right, Fairchild. This is no time for talk. I'll call back later. Now, let's go, Margo. Where? Number 16, High Beach Road, where I think we'll have the social distinction of meeting the Messrs. Hoffner and Max, Incorporated. Hoffner. Yeah? Get downstairs, try that phone again. See if you can't get reservation on the next flight to Cuba, Mexico, well, any place that's far enough away. what. Hey. It's a car. Yeah. Stopped in front. Yeah. Somebody got out. Hey, hey, look, will you? It's a dame. She wants in. Yeah. What do we do? Well, you go down like a little gentleman and you let her in. Oh, but I... Go uh... on, go on, go on, go on. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe she just got the wrong house. Is this number 15, High Beach Road? Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, you looking for number 16? Uh, I am. Uh, uh, how'd you get the address? Uh, most peculiarly. I was asleep not half an hour ago, and I woke up to see an old man in the shadows of my room. A very old man. Uh, white-haired, lean, but very erect. Eagle. Huh? Like a king. Oh. Uh, he told me to come here, then turned and walked away and... Uh, practically seemed to vanish. Uh, why, uh, why did he say to you to come here, ma'am? To find the crown of Odas. Oh. Interesting the way you say, oh. It was? Yes. That you're going to say quite a few interesting things to me. Why? Because if you don't, you have a very short life at present. Put down the gun. Put it down here. Not on your luck. I bought the crown on the legitimate market together with my husband, Louis Roger, and his partner, Bertha. I don't intend to take this, though. Go oh, easy, go oh, easy. I'm going to count three. Before I finish, you're going to have told me where the crown is. If you don't tell me, I promise you that it'll be the very last mistake you ever have. Please. One. Two. <laughs> Mrs. Roche. Mrs. Roche. She's dead. Max. She's dead, too. Yes, yeah, so what do you want? Is to stand there and let her plug you? It's too much. Too much blood, too much, too much. I can't take this, Max. It ain't for me. Tighten up, tighten up, big dog. I can't, I can't. We're in this up to the waist and we have this murder and murder more murders. Like, we're cursed. If we cut that diamond started dinging, it was cursed. What's the matter? You afraid of the No, cop? no, ain't that, ain't that. So? I, I got a feeling we're... 
We're dealing with something here. Worse than cops. What? I don't know, Max. I don't know. I don't know. We'll return to the shadow in just a minute. Il Roger had come to the house on High Beach Road, seeking the crown of Odal and finding death. A few moments later, Lamont and Margot drew up in front of the darkened hideaway. Here we are, Margot. Come on. It looks frightening to here on the edge of the sea. Ah, midsummer's probably delightful. What do you say we come back in midsummer? <laughs> come along, Miss Lane. Hello. Hello, anybody here? Hmm. Somebody left the door unlocked. Quickly by mistake, I'm afraid. Wait, I'll find the light. There we are now. Come on, look. Where? There, the foot of the stairs. The lady's purse. Jill for Roger. Pick it up, Margo. Margo, why don't you pick it up? It's got blood on it. Oh, Ma. Yes, sir. Where is she? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We won't find her. I know it. I know it. Easy now, Margo. Well, at least we found this. What? Telephone. Who are you calling? Local police. Might as well make arrangements for getting out of this alive ourselves. Station house, 10th precinct. Just sergeant speaking. I'm reporting a case of wholesale murder. What's that? I'm completely sure of two homicides and reasonably sure of the third. And in my opinion, you can't get here too soon. Okay, where are you? A house on High Beach Road. What's the address? It's, uh, number six. Lamar, Lamar. Lamar. Cut the station, lady. Cut it out. Hey, what goes on here? I come down here to phone the airport again. Here's the guy full of the police station. Hey, what, uh, you get the call through? Get him. Get him. Please. Ask me, lady. Did he get that call what? through? Yes. Is he lying? Uh, I heard him say high beach road just before I let fly with a chair. Well, why didn't you let fly sooner? Because I'm cracking up. That's why I'm cocking out with this whole thing. Let's get out of here, Mac. Well, uh, uh, there's no reservations anywhere. The trains are for the planes are all packed. We'll this guy's car, the one I drove up in. It'll be red hot in two hours. When it gets too hot, we'll get you to steal another one. One way or another, we'll get to the border. Yeah, get to the border. Sounds like a good deal. You got the crown? It's right here. Top of the sideboard. Uh... Grab them suitcases by the door. Okay. Come on, lady. What? I said, come on. You're going to spend a few years in Mexico. No. No. Look, lady, be wise. Stay healthy. The only way we could leave you here would be dead. Come on, Let you. Let me go. Lamar. Have her other arm. Lamar. And we're off. Uh, Good evening, gentlemen. It's a fair job. The name may mean little to you, but the gun in my hand, I'm sure, speaks for itself. What, what do you want? The crown of Odal. And what's more, I'll have it. Now. Without stories and no delay. Look, wise guy. Max. Yeah. Give it to him. What do you mean, give it to him? It's worth a couple of hundred grand. It'll be of little use to you dead, and that's where you both will be if you don't deliver, and quick. You got enough trouble, Max? Unload. Unload. Uh, what about us, fair child? What do you mean? If we do do business with you, will you let us make the break for it? With my best wishes. Uh, Mr. Fairchild. I'm sorry, Miss Lane, I have no choice. I'm lucky to hold the upper hand for a moment with these two professionals. It's a deal, then. A deal. Here, take your jewel-studded headache and let us out of here. Come on, come on, hot man. Come on, Fairchild. Sorry to have met you. The feeling, I assure you, is mutual. Oh, Mr. Fairchild. Where's Francis? There, on the floor. What happened? Oh, they heard him. They hit him with the chair. Francis. Francis. Is it serious? I can't say how serious these most to think they're in conflict. The best we can do is to... You hear that? Yes. Think they're coming back? It's possibly reconsidered. But they're going to walk straight into trouble if they have. Be careful. Arthur. Max. I can't see you, but I hear you. First one to show his face is going to get... Where is he? Where am 
I? In the attic, my dear, of number 16, High Beach Road. You fainted, you see? Oh. Who are you? We have met before socially in this lane several times, I believe. Oh? What? Professor Drumgo? Exactly, Miss Lane. I'm very flattered that you remember I'm me. I'm awfully glad to see you, Professor. I've had a dreadful time. I understand, my dear. I have had rather an exciting night myself. You have? A... Oh, I remember now. She thought you were dead. <laughs> I'm very glad to announce that my death was a mere matter of mechanical illusion. Mechanical illusion? I allowed the Messrs. Hoffner and Max to deprive me of my revolver and kill me with it. But not, however, without first being careful to see to it that the cartridges were blanks. You did that, Professor? Why? It was part of my plan. My most excellent plan. Which started this evening when I called Max and Hoffner and told them the whereabouts of the crown of both eyes. Wonderfully clever. Don't you agree? I don't know whether I do or not. If you hadn't told them, then they never could have stolen it in the first place. But I wanted them to steal it, Miss Lane. But it led to all the murders, Professor Drumgold. And I wanted all the murders. I, I don't understand. I wanted the crown of Odalf, Miss Lane. I, all for myself. And I was resolved to get it. I arranged it so that Max and Hoffner could see it, hoping and knowing that they would then have to kill each of the real owners to protect their ill-gotten gain. I helped keep the murders on schedule by use of a few mysterious phone calls. And I must say I was lost in admiration at the success of my strategy. No! Oh, but yes, Miss Lay. Of course, the ending had been planned differently. I had hoped that Max and Hoffner would keep their courage up long enough to kill their child, too, as well as Roger and his wife. But they let me down, and I was forced to dirty my own hands with their child's blood. Oh, oh no! But things worked out quite well. The three original owners are dead, the thieves have fled, and I have the crown of Odal. And now, Miss Lane... One bit of unfinished business. No! Don't hurt me! I will leave no stone unturned to assure my victory, to secure myself in possession of the crown of Odo. No! No! <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> Who is it? Who's in this room? Someone laughed. It was I, Drumgold. Who are you? The Shadow. Uh, <laughs> I'm here in this room, though you cannot see me. What do you want, Shadow? Justice. Retribution for your clever, heartless murder. I, I did not intend to kill. I had planned to keep my hands clean. Of I... course. They were using poor, stupid Hoffman and Max for your criminal marionettes while you worked the strings in safety. Well, Professor, they are already in the hands of the police and they'll pay a heavy penalty. No. And your penalty should be all the heavier. You, the mastermind who connived and planned to arrange the deaths of the victims to make appointment after appointment for murder. Who, who is that? Your opposition, Drumgold. The male fist of the law. The police? Ah, they can have me, Shadow, but they will never get my courage. Shadow, he's got the crown. Put it down, Drumgold. It returns to the sea from which it came. <laughs> You say Drumgold threw the crown out the window, Mr. Cranston? Yes, uh, that one, just up there. Just before your men broke in, Lieutenant. You must have given it a terrific key. We can't find it anywhere. It should be right here on the beach, under the window. Perhaps the tide carries it out. It doesn't seem likely. Well, we'll start dragging the shore for it as soon as it's light. Good idea. Well, good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Mr. Good night. Mom. Yes, Mother. I don't think it's possible that he threw it out to sea, do you? Frankly, no. Then where is it? It's almost as if somebody scares it away. What was that? It came from over the water. You know what it sounded like? Foghorn? Hardly. Afraid a whistle? Not a bit. It's eerie and majestic, like... Like? Trumpets of an ancient Viking king putting out to sea. You know what I think, Margo? What? I think we both need a really good night's sleep. Story 
is copyrighted by Pitt and Smith Publications, Incorporated. All names and places are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when the shadow will again demonstrate that... Weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> next week, same time, same station, we bring you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. The part of the Lamont Cranston was played by Brett Morrison, Margot by Grace Matthews. This program came to you from New York. Stay tuned now for a quick as a flash. This is the Mutual Darwin Broadcasting System. <laughs>